everybody. I'm excited. I've got a huge group with me today. The Green River Ordinance. Hi guys. Hey. hey. Well, I, I'm Denton. I'm the drummer. I'm Joshua. I play guitar. I'm Jeff. I play bass. I'm Josh and I sing. I'm Jamie and I play guitar. Awesome. Well, welcome to the corner, everybody. Thanks for having us. I'm happy to be here. Well, this is kind of a clutter. This is like really yeah. cluttered with you guys to make now. It more than it was. First time yeah. in the corner. It's fun. <laughs> it's a great place, and I'm glad you guys are here. Let's talk about your past because it's a little different. You guys, this isn't your first rodeo. Huh? Y'all been out for a while. Ten years, I think. Twelve years. Twelve years. Wow. Twelve long years. Yeah. Uh huh. Well, tell us about how you started. What, we, we started the band, uh, Jeff and I, our brothers, uh, he hadn't gathered that yet. Uh, we, we, we played Sweet Home Alabama in our middle school talent show. Awesome. Um, we grew up on kind of like Southern, kind of ZZ Top and Leonard Skinner and Credence. And, and so we started playing music when he was 13 and I was 14, 15. We met Josh when, we were fi when I was 15, our, our sophomore year of, uh, of high school. And we were... Uh, you know, we're just kind of this classic blues rock, kind of southern rock band, and and uh, when we were looking for a name, people were like, what's Green River Ordinance? There, there was a metal road sign in the garage where we used to practice that said, Green River Ordinance Enforced. And we didn't know what it meant or where it came from, but it sounded like Creedence Clearwater Revival. <laughs> we were like, that's going to be our name. It means a no door-to-door -door solicitation. When I was in, uh, my, I think my junior year of high school, like after we started the band, and we had kind of playing for, you know, we were like the Fort Worth High School band and been playing a little bit and I was in class one day and these two security guards came to my class and they're like, Jamie Ice, we need you in the principal's office. And I was like, oh, what did I do? So I went went in there and the principal, I sat down at his desk, he was like, Jamie, because we were kind of friends, he was like, I, I found out what Green River Ordinance means. He was like, I've, I've been doing some research all weekend. <laughs> it was like really random that my principal was like being researched about. Right, band. about your band. It's like it's a, it's a law from Green River, Wyoming, from World War II that prohibits door-to-door -door solicitation. Wow. So, and now it exists in you know whatever cities. Yeah. Have that ordinance how, effect. How interesting. That yeah. is cool. It's also a uh, it's a Green River killer. Right. Which we had no idea about either. But sometimes we'll be good places and be like, oh, y'all like about the Green River killer. You like a tribute band, and we're like, no, we listen to our music. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But not a tribute band to a killer. That's so weird. not. Yeah. yeah, that that would be a little strange. Yeah. So then you guys um, got really big, really fast. Uh, I don't know if that was fast. <laughs> fast. <laughs> An overnight 10 year success That's right. story. That's yeah, right. okay. Yeah, right. Yeah. A lot of miles on the van. Right? Across yeah. the country for anybody and everybody that would have us. Yeah, but you guys went um, and played for in front of uh, folks like Bon Jovi. Yeah, we've had, that, had wow. the opportunity to open up for some of our heroes, which has been some of the coolest experiences of our existence as a band. Tell us, tell us a little bit about how that came about. Yeah, in college, we uh, we all were full-time students, and um, three or four days a week, we'd play shows in Texas. And so in between being full-time students, we would drive to Austin, Houston, um, Lubbock. Lubbock, College Station, any place that would have us come play and then we would drive back that night to make our morning classes. So <laughs> our grades started to suffer and, <laughs> and music started to take off and it was one of those things where we were kind of at a fork in the road and we decided that we wanted to pursue music on, on a more serious level and we convinced our parents that it was a good idea that um, that we had a future in music and so we convinced them to let us take time off of school. So oh, oh, before that, if you were in school... Here's we were, one of the deciding things that helped us kind of like convince our parents. Okay. We were, we were in school and uh, my mom entered us in a contest to open for Bon Jovi. Wow! I don't even think she told us. us. <laughs> she was just like, hey by the way, I entered you in this contest. And did, like told us several days later. And uh, it was for the local radio station and we got picked to open for Bon Jovi at American Airlines Center in front of wow. 20,000 people. Oh, and, that is uh, too cool. When we were like 19, we were like in college and we played this, we were like so nervous and freaked <laughs> out. And, uh, but the show was, it was really, it was just us and Bon Jovi. And then like the next day we were back in class and we were all kind of like, <laughs> we, we would rather play music. Yeah. <laughs> Mom, look what we can be. 
John Bon Jovi. Yeah. Wow. So that was a little easier to convince the parents after that. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. I think there were a few things that kind of uh, that were happening that allowed us to really think it was something we wanted to do and could do. Yeah. That's so cool. And then since then, we got to do a benefit for Gulf Shores with Bon Jovi also. Very yeah. cool. So you guys have kept up a relationship with them? We're so pretty much buddies. Yeah, so you hang out all the time? Us and John. Oh my God. Oh my God. First name basis. Yeah. That's just like I, too cool. I call and text him all the time. Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. never, he didn't ever answer. But. He didn't no. answer. <laughs> <laughs> it's a one-way <laughs> relationship. <laughs> he does. Y'all are best friends, but he doesn't know it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. I run on his Facebook wall. That's awesome. <laughs> he doesn't me back. Yeah. Okay, well tell me about how Dancing Shoes came about. Um, that's a fun story. So. When Jamie and Jeff were in Fort Worth, Texas, playing in Green River Ordinance, they had, you know, wore bell bottoms, and they were like a classic rock and roll band. And I grew up in Alito, which is about 30 miles west of Fort Worth. Joshua and I went to a little small <laughs> high school. There was, you know, one stoplight in the town and all that fun <laughs> stuff. Uh, my dad was a singer-songwriter and grew up playing, you know, Gene Watson and Earl Haggard songs. So, as a 12-year-old, uh, my dad would take my brother and I out on Friday and Saturday nights to these things in Texas called Opry's, which most Texans are familiar with what an Opry is. And we would play Grapevine, Wiley, like some of these really small Texas towns. And my dad and mom would dress me up in Western wear. And I, and I had a Chili Bowl haircut, and I would play these Gene Watson and Merle Haggard songs for these older audiences of country music uh -huh. lovers. And so it was kind of an interesting thing to do as a 12-year-old. You're up there singing Merle Haggard songs about dying. I remember singing uh, Farewell Party, a song about uh, you know, it's basically your last breath of life, and you're at your at your farewell party. You're right. just, you know, remember all these things. And it's weird being a twelve year old singing that. You're like, what the heck am I singing? About? Right. <laughs> so a lot of uh, the influence, um, just our upbringing in Texas and the roots, kind of comes from the youth and experiencing those songs. At the time, I didn't really know how important it was, but I don't think a song like Dance and Choose would exist if it wasn't for some of those memories. Wow, that's a great, that's a good, that's a great story. Cool. It was torturous at the time, though. I'm sure it was. I bet it was. Wow. Twelve. I, can we get some photos of you oh, in those westerns? there's plenty of them. Yeah. Mama, Mama has them, they're very incriminating. And then, of course, we got to see you guys in your bell bottoms. I mean, yeah. come on. Uh, yeah. We got <laughs> long, super yeah, long bell hair. bottoms and long hair. And so nice. I, I meet these guys, and they're like in this really cool rock and roll band, you know, southern rock and roll, and I'm like, I've been singing, you know. Gene Watson songs and these really quiet Opry, so I was like, I want to join you guys. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that does sound a little well, more exciting for sounds, a kid. Like my age group might think this is a little cooler, <laughs> right? Because <laughs> we weren't good at sports, and so when you're not good at sports, you have to do something to be cool, right? Right. Your parents give you instruments, so your parents buy you musical like, instruments. You can't throw a football or a baseball. So let's get them something. Like, let's yeah. Try this yeah. Guitar in there. Nice. That's awesome. And we're here today. That's awesome. That's very very cool. So. Now what? What are you guys doing now? We are uh, currently, we've got a new record called Under Fire, and we have song Dancing Shoes that's getting played on the Texas Country Radio, and we're, we're playing music and we're traveling around. Yeah. Um, we are uh, playing actually, going to be all over Texas and the rest of the United States in the fall. That's so. awesome. That's awesome. Well, the song Dancing Shoes, I just love. You guys sound so cool and so awesome. <laughs> it's just a great tune, and I, I hope that we get to hear it in a little bit. I can make that happen. I think yeah. you might, yeah, maybe, maybe one song, maybe two. Heck, y'all might stay all day. Yeah, you <laughs> can. Like take a barrette, we'll take up a residency in the club. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, I think everybody here would be all right with that. Everybody's I saw going some... working and we're just like, man, that band's still here. It's still in the club. <laughs> <laughs> that would definitely be not a problem for us. Well, thank you guys for coming. I really, thank really you appreciate guys. it. Thanks for having me here. All right. Well, if you guys want to know more about the band, you can always go to Green or Ordinate, no, Green River Ordinance dot com. Yeah, true story. Put on your old black dress and grab your dancing shoes. Head out to the old Bart Rose and we'll dance away. Our 